Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to perform learning assignment 10 where we will implement update item functionality in SPFX client side web part application. So let's look into the steps. What are the steps we have to follow to implement this functionality? So guys, to implement update list item functionality, we have to follow five steps. In the step one, we need to create variables to grab the input values from controls. Once it is being done, then at the step 2, we need to import the module to perform HTTP operations from SPFX application. Then at step 3, we need to prepare SharePoint REST API URL. Then we have to prepare body. Then we have to prepare header. Perform the update operation. If you remember that when we were working with the Postman tool, we have to provide all these details before sending the request. So let me show you again. So guys, if you remember that, when we were working with the postman tool over here we have specified the url so this url we need to build in our sharepoint client side web part application then we need to build the headers so this information we are passing over here in form of key value pair same way we need to pass this header information from the sharepoint client side web part application next we need to build the body over here we are preparing the body with the raw form of json where we are specifying the values, which value we want to update. Same way, we need to prepare the body while working with the SharePoint client side web part application. And that is what our step number three is. Once it is being prepared, then over here, we were sending the request. And within SharePoint client side web part application, we are going to perform a step four, where we will send the request with the help of the code, which will prepare at a step number four that we will look into. Then at last, a step number five, we will implement the click event functionality on update button. Here there is a typo. So guys, if you compare all these steps with the create item functionality, it is almost similar. The only difference is the header part that we will look into. So now let's proceed further and start writing the code for all these steps. So let's go to the Visual Studio code. So guys, I am inside the Visual Studio code. And now let's start building the code for update list item. So for that, I will tell private update list item. And over here, I will specify return type is going to be the void. And then we will write the step one. So in the step one, we need to grab the value, whatever the value we will pass through the control and that we will assign inside the variables. If you remember that we have written the code for the create item, it is going to be similar to that. So for our case, we are going to grab it. So let's go to the create item function. And from here, we will copy this line of code because it is going to be the similar. So now we will go back and add the update list item. This is our step one. Paste it. Now step two, if you remember that we have imported the module. So in this case, we are not going to import module as we are writing the functionality in the same file. So we don't need to write this particular line of code. So we will skip the step two for the update operation. So because we are good with this step. Now let's proceed to the step three so if you remember that step three we need to build the url again go back to the create item and over here grab this line of code copy this line copy it and over here we will mention this one and over here i will tell parenthesis start and over here i will put plus and then i will specify the id and from where the id will come i will show you so over here then i will put plus sign again and then double quotes start and the parenthesis and and over here you will see that it is complaining for id because we haven't defined id yet so for the id and over here i will copy this line of code and i will do some changes over here i will tell that it is going to be our id and the get element by id i need to grab the text field where we are passing the id if you remember that we are having a text field that is called text id which is this piece of code over here whatever we are passing the id that we want to grab it and how we will grab it i'm grabbing the control id and then i'm coming over here and that i'm going to use it and here we will specify text id and this will return us the id which is being provided by the users so guys now we are done with the url creation now we will proceed further and build the body body is also going to be the same so i'm going to grab the code for body from the create list item functionality and i will come over here 
I will copy this line of code. So let me copy it and I will come here and paste it. Now we are done with the body part. Now the third item, if you remember that, that is an header. So now we will build the header part of it. We have done with the URL. We have done with the body. Now the header part. So let's proceed for the so guys. So far, the create item as well as the update item, the steps are almost similar. Now, when we are writing the code for header part, there is minor difference between create item as well as the update item. So let's look into the difference, what the difference it has. But prior to that, let me grab the code which we are going to leverage. So first we will grab the code over here. I will come here and I will copy this part of the code. Copy it and then I will go to the update item and over here I will paste it. Now let's write the code for headers. Over here I will mention const headers any equal to and over here I need to specify the keys and the key is going to be x hyphen http hyphen method and then the value is going to be the merge because we are going to perform the update operation so it should be merge then we need to specify if hyphen match then select all that is asterisk if you remember this configuration in the postman how we did while doing the update operation that i will show you so this is the configuration over here we were passing in the postman we are doing the same thing on the sharepoint client side web part application now we are done with the code now we will pass this header so how we will pass it we need to tell that headers and the value we want to pass this headers variable so let me pass it over here headers comma it is done so now we have done with the step 3 so let's proceed to the step 4 so guys in the step 4 we need to prepare code to perform the restful call from spfx application so let's do it so this piece of code is also going to be the same with the create item functionality so i am going to grab the code again so over here we are into the create item functionality in this i will copy completely and i will go back to my update item functionality and over here i will paste it so now we have done with the implementation now here is certain difference the first difference is status so it is going to be 204 so over here you must be asking that how do i come to know about this status for all the http requests so there is a site you must have to visit if you want to know which status belongs to what values and that status is industry standard status for all the http operations so to know the http status you have to visit this site http status.com and over here suppose if you want to know about 204 you come here enter then it will give you the information what it is and in which scenario you have to use it 204 is mainly related with the update operation so whenever we perform update operation this is the response code we got anyway let's proceed further so now we have done till step 4 over here we will change some message item updated successfully we can write and then we need to write an error occur and this is fine response code response dot status text so this code is fine so guys so far we have completed from step 1 to step 4 and now we will write the code for step 5 where we will where we will implement click event functionality on update button so let's do it i will come over here and over here i will copy this line of code copy it and i will paste it over here and i will change the button id so let me grab the button id and the button id we were having is the btn update so let's grab it copy it and we will come to the button place and we will come over here and paste it and next we need to next we need to specify over here our function name so let's copy our function name update list item and over here we will specify our function name save it now we are done with the step one to step five now next we need to build and gulp so so let's do it so let's click on terminal new terminal and then over here we will specify gulp build command enter so it will start the build process now build has been completed now let's proceed further and write gulp so minus minus no browser into let's start the server so now it is starting the server over here so guys now server is started so let's open the hosted workbench so guys i am inside the hosted workbench and over here i will add the web part click on it now i will specify the id to and read the registered user info and over here i will change this guy from batch 2 to batch 3 and then i will change him from intermediate to expert and then i will click on update so first i will show you this guy is john is in batch 2 and he has knowledge of intermediate which is the current status now let's come over here 
and update it the moment you will update it and you will go back and refresh it then you will find that this get updated john is being updated from batch 2 to batch 3 and from level of knowledge from intermediate to expert so we have successfully developed the functionality of update list item with the help of sphttp module and this is what i wanted to demonstrate you in this session so let's wrap our session so guys in this session we have developed the functionality for update list item where we have followed the five step which starts from a step one where we have created the variable to grab the input values from the control then we have performed a step two which was already there so we haven't taken any option we have skipped it a step three is almost similar to the create list item so we have done little bit of changes at header part of it for url and body url is there is some changes body is not at all changed but header we have some changes we which we have done in that next we have step four where we are performing the rest api call that was almost similar to the create list item functionality and at last we have binded the update list item functionality with the update button click so on this note i am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care